Christopher Bailey, thank you so much for accepting to answer our questions today. So first, I would love you to introduce yourself, exactly explaining us your role in art and healing perspective. Sure. Uh, my name is Christopher Bailey. I'm the arts and health lead at the World Health Organization. And basically, the program falls into three categories. The first is looking at the evidence base for the healing or health benefits of the arts. The second is working at the community level with arts-based health interventions uh, in WHO priority areas. And the third is working with uh, the global media uh, uh, using the arts to reach the most number of people with pro-health messaging. Excellent. So why is art so important for our society from a health perspective? Well, I I think that the arts are actually an intrinsic part of health. Uh, I mean, some people are surprised that WHO uh, is involved in this area. Um, in fact, WHO has used the arts for health promotion since our inception in 1948. Uh, in our public health campaigns, we enlist musicians, actors, radio dramas, film, uh, whatever, uh, to try and reach the most number of people with a pro-health message. But I think what makes this program a little bit different is that it goes beyond just simply embedding a health message into a performance piece or a work of art. It's, it's really about the intrinsic health benefits of the creative experience and how that can uh, augment, help, support you, uh, anyone's physical, mental, and social well-being. And uh, I, I think the bottom line is creative expression is not just simply a tool to better health. It is part of living and therefore a part of health. So could you give us concrete artistic projects supported by your initiative that are done regarding a real health impact of art? Oh, sure. I could give a thousand. Uh, let me pick one. There was a small project in the UK called Music and Mums, uh, where music therapists were experimenting with singing groups to help uh, mothers who were experiencing postpartum depression uh, to manage that, uh, that condition. And it was a relatively small trial in the beginning, but it was a controlled trial. Uh, and the initial results were very interesting that, in fact, uh, singing as opposed to other in uh, interventions such as group play and, and uh, uh, conversation and that sort of thing um, had a measurably deeper and more long lasting impact than other interventions. And the results were interesting enough that uh, WHO got Denmark, Romania, and eventually Italy involved in uh, trying to take this idea and uh, transplant it to a different cultural setting uh, on a larger scale to see what happens. And uh, the, the EU has been involved from the beginning so that if the numbers come out the way we hope they will come out, there's already a plan in place to roll this out uh, across the region and, and perhaps other regions as well. And so that's an example of taking an arts-based intervention for a real uh, health issue, um, using rigorous method and study design to see is there a there there, but also is there a potential for uh, transposing it into a different setting uh, and at scale and to reach the most number of people possible, particularly the hard to reach populations, the underserved. So we hear a very big importance of measuring and impacts. Uh, what type of measurements are you doing? How can we measure impact and effect, long lasting effects? Well, I think there are multiple me measures. Uh, the most typical measures that people often go to because I think they're the easiest are things like a reduction of symptoms or lower cortisol levels, the stress hormone, that sort of thing. Um, those are important measures. They're they're very doable, but they're also what I would call deficit measures. And the WHO definition of health is more than just the reduction of symptoms or um, illness or infirmity. 
It's the attainment of the highest level of physical, mental, and social well-being. So I think particularly in the arts, our measures have to be more than just a reduction of symptoms. Uh, the measures have to be asset measures. Do you um, have a sense of community? Uh, do you have faith in the future? Do you um, have a, a stronger sense of, of identity? Um, th these are some of the other measures that can come into play. So you have the biomedical measures, but then you also have the more qualitative measures of well-being, which I think are extremely important because at the end of the day, um, the arts are not a drug. Uh, the, the arts are a way of interacting and, and, and coping and celebrating life. And the measures have, have to reflect uh, what, what it is that you're trying to measure. So art for reinsertion, social reinsertion in a way, a very interesting. How can everybody use art for better health today? Well, I think they do, perhaps not without even really realizing it. I mean, every time you are worried and walking down the street and suddenly you feel a rhythm and you see something that attracts your attention and makes you smile and you start humming a tune, suddenly your mood has shifted, your frame has shifted, the sun hits your face, um, you're in your home and you decide... I want to uh, arrange these freshly cut flowers in a special way. Uh, I'm cooking a meal for my family. And, you know, it really comfort me to use my grandmother's bolognese sauce. But this time I'm going to add some cinnamon in my own special uh, way. I mean, what, what we're really talking about is mindfulness, creativity, sharing, and connection. Connection to yourself, connection to each other, connection to the world around you. And uh, one of the ways that our species has evolved to help us do that is creative expression. Could we say that the intensity of life is in a way linked to art? Well, it certainly augments it. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to say that the arts are a magic bullet. Uh, for instance, I have friends who are big sports fans uh, and they don't necessarily go to museums or whatever, but they get many of the same benefits of a feeling of community, uh, a feeling of expression, uh, of outlet. Uh, and in a way, sports are a form of theater. It's uh, antagonist versus protagonist, whichever side you choose. And uh, strategies to achieve a goal and you don't know necessarily how it's going to play out. There's suspense and there's conclusion. Uh, so there's there's a narrative structure to it. Uh, but um, I would say uh, the arts are a way of coping. Um, the arts can be a way of honing your uh, uh, perception, perceptual abilities. It can be a way of... Um, supporting your sense of self so that you can be more productive. It can be a way of connecting to a, a community, uh, even if it's just simply being in an audience and sharing an emotional state with the people around you. Uh, that creates uh, a form of community even for the two hours of the performance. Uh, so, um, and, and I think what we're seeing too in the biochemistry is that the body rewards these states with feelings of euphoria, of connection, of contentment, of a sense of presence and a sense of joy. Um, it, it's not so much that the arts create the joy, it just augments it. It, it, uh, it rewards us uh, for those states. I, I don't wanna break it down into uh, too much of a mechanistic uh, approach. It's a, uh, it's nature's way of, of saying, yes, that was a great moment. So thank you so much for those very insightful, um, you know, beautiful information. Uh, to conclude, what would be the message you would like to deliver uh, for this World Art Day, especially with regard oh. to the healing power of art? I would say everyone is an artist, whether you realize it or not. Uh, when we talk about the healing power of art, we're not saying that the arts will cure you of your conditions. We're saying that through the arts, you can help curate your life. Thank you very much.
，拜拜。